Hey, what's up, man? How you guys doing today? Hopefully you had a good one. Hopefully you had a great one. It was wonderful to be here again with y'all. It's good to be here again. Well, today we're going to talk about changing lives. It's a scary one. It's a hard topic we're going to talk about. So disclaimer right now. Uh, we are going to talk about changing, so I am going to say some little hard things. I mean, not, no, of course not. I'm not going to cuss or nothing like that, but I'm going to keep it real, guys, okay? So um, if you guys don't want to hear the things I'm going to say uh, or don't feel bad or anything like that, um, go ahead and skip this video, man. Don't don't even listen to this video at all. Um, but I'm going to keep it real as, as, as I can, and... Uh, it's gonna be a hard one. It's gonna be very hard to say it, uh, but I had to say it. Um, so yeah, um, I'm working with different lighting. So I really didn't bring uh, my lights or anything like that today. Um, so you, that's why you see this little light up here, and this is just the light from the truck. And um, so I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out where to get better light and stuff like that. But um, we do what we gotta do, right? All right, guys, go ahead and get your pen and paper. If you're going to stay with me, get your pen and paper, write them out. So get ready to write these verses I'm going to tell you. And um, and so we can get this one started. Get ready, okay? Changing lives. Let's go. All right, guys, hopefully I gave you enough time to go get a piece of paper and a pen. If it wasn't enough time, go ahead and still pause this video and go get your pen and paper. But let's get started with this one, man. Today, we're going to talk about change. Now, this word right here, the just the word itself, change, could be a very, very scary topic. It could be very scary and very hard in our lives because not all of us want to change. But it's very necessary. It's very important. The world itself needs to change, and you or yourself needs to change. Just 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 think about just th think for a second how the world is going and, and 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 do you believe we're going on the right track do you believe i mean do you believe everything's going the way it should be the way the way god designed this world to be because if you don't believe it's going it's going the right way, then we have to change because something happened between then and now that we change. Because the Bible says he doesn't change, but we're the ones that change. So something changed between now and then. Now things start changing. See, that's the thing, though. A lot of people want to blame this and want to blame that, but they don't want to see why the true reason everything has changed. Why the things are changing because we have stopped seeking God's word. We have stopped. We start. We stop looking for stuff and now we're scared of change we're scared of changing our lives we're scared of losing what we have we're scared of of of, of what they're gonna say about me or or this and that where that word change means a lot you know sometimes it's very hard you know you're losing stuff you know you like for example you know you're losing your house you know you're losing your work you know you're losing that but you don't want to change your lifestyle you don't want to change that but you want to get the blessings though yeah that what you want you really want to get the the, the help you want to get the money you want to get this you want to get that but you don't want to change your lifestyle well then it doesn't work but being that doesn't work like that because you have to change Change to get the things you want. If you stay in the same course, well, that same course is gonna take you down to the pit. But if you change course, if you know that, that if you know that's taking you down to the pit, and you change the course, if you change that course, then you will get out of that pit. That's the way things work. See, even sometimes we want to be, we want to put God like he's our, our like a pawn shop. We want to put God like like he's a, a a loan from a bank, a bank teller loan. You know, hey, you know, give me blessings, give me this, give me that, but don't ask me to change though. Don't don't ask me to do anything for you, but I sure want your blessings. 
You know, you want you you just want to visit him when you need something. You just want to talk to him when you need something. But when I'm good, no, 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 I don't need you. You see, that that's hard. How can God answer prayers when nobody wants to talk to him? How can God answer your prayers if you don't want to seek him? See, that's the first part. We need to change so God can help you out. But you don't want to change. Why is it so scary? Why is it so scary for you to change? Why is it so hard to make that decision of changing? It's hard. I understand it is hard. It is scary. But you have to do it. If you've seen your life going down the gutter, you have to change. You have to do it. There was one time, this occasion, this this person told me, Max, I don't find my wife attractive no more. I, I don't I don't have that attraction to my wife. And I told him, why, why is it? Why is it that back then when you knew her, you were attracted to her. Now that now that you're married to her, you're not attracted to her. What what make that change in your life? He's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, there's a reason. Examine your life. Examine why you stop having that attraction to your wife. Because she's your wife and you fell in love with her. So you still have to have that attraction to her. So what is it? And we start examining his life. He started thinking about, you know, you know what, Max? I'm addicted to pornography, to porn. You know, well, that's the problem. You know, that's the major problem because now you're addicted to that porn. And you expect your wife to be the same way as those girls in that porn. And she's not going to downgrade herself to be that person that your, your fantasies are not about her. Because that's not real life. Real life is your wife. She's right beside you. She's there to thick, thick and, and thin. She's there. That porn is fake. That doesn't help you. That doesn't do nothing to you. That is just destroying your marriage. That thing, that fantasy you see in there, that fake fantasy you see in there, is destroying your marriage. Change it before you lose it completely. Change it. But he was addicted to it. It was hard. Very hard, he said. Max, it's the hardest thing I did because I was addicted to it. That was something I stayed there since I was a small kid. I started watching that. Since I was a kid, I started watching it. So it's very hard to get out of it, Max. And like, change is not easy. Change is not the simple thing we want to just, just simple words we say. Change takes effort. Change takes guts. Change takes valiant. If you really want to love somebody, if you really love your wife, you will really want to change. But if you really love that fantasy life right there that doesn't exist, then you never want to change. So I tell this kid, you know what? Do you love your wife? Do you love your family? Are they, are they special to you? It took time for him to think about it because he did love his wife, but he felt unpleasured. It's not because his wife did not give him no sex. It's just, he was stuck in that fantasy world. But then he realized that he was going to about to get divorced. And that's when he came to talk to me, like, you know, the second time. He's like, you know what, Max? You're right. I'm going to lose my marriage. I'm going to lose everything. I need to change. And so he took the process of changing. He decided to change. Again, it's not easy. It's very hard. Now, this is just a small example. What is change for you? What do you need to change? Because the whole world needs change. You cannot tell me right now, oh, I'm perfect. I don't need to change. I don't need nothing. I am good. I am that. You cannot tell me that because then you're a liar, a 
Oh, you're a liar, liar, pants on fire, buddy. But no, we all need to change. Even I need to change. Everybody in this world needs to change. We all need to get closer to the Lord Almighty. We need to get closer every day, trying to reach His steps, trying to live His lifestyle. Of course, we will never accomplish the way He lived, but we have to try every single day. We all need to change every single day. But the major change takes guts. The major change that's going to change your life completely taste guts. Are you? Are you somebody who wants to do it? Are you a coward? Or are you a great victory person? Victorious, a warrior. Are you a coward or a warrior? Are you guys? I thought it was going to be a little tough, but... I'll try to ease it up a little bit, all right? I'll, I'll try to bring it down just a little tad. But what, let, let's go to this night and it says, what does the Bible say about change then? If we know we need to change, then where else can we go but to God? And we got to go to God when then what the Bible says about change. Is, is it very necessary? Is it not necessary or what, what is it about? What, 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 what can we get as change? In, in Christian life, it's very important to realize change is very important. But let, let, let's let's get into it. All right, let's go. Let's go to the first verse. The first, uh, yeah, verse we're gonna read the second uh, Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse 17. And it says like this Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. Again, let's read it one more time. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And I believe this is one of my brother's favorite verses. And he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new cre creation, the new creation has has come, and the old has gone. The new is here. So now we could see with this verse that he's talking about the old, our old self has passed away. It's, it's gone. It's it's no longer with us. But now we've been. We got a new life. We got a new style of living. Now we, when we come to Christ. So even God himself, when he, even God himself said, if you want a new life, if you're tired of living that old lifestyle, if you're tired of, of dealing with drugs, if you're tired of, de of dealing with, with with drinking, if you're if you're tired of dealing with arguments in your house, if you're tired of getting divorced, if you're tired of, of losing money, if you're tired of, of always feeling that uh, the world it's against you, then you need a new life. Then you need a new a, a new start. Then it's time to reset the press the reset button and come back to the one who's actually going to help you. And the one who's going to help you is Jesus Christ. He is the one who's going to give you life. But let's read the next verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse Verse two, and it says like this: Do not, do not conform to the path of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, uh, pleasing, and perfect will. Let's read it one more time: Do not conform to the path of this world. Do not conform. Do not be, okay, well, this is my life. Well, I, I'm just going to accept. I'm going to accept living this way. I'm going to accept, you know, what this happened to me. I'm just going to accept that, you know, I'm salty all the time. I'm just going to accept that I'm, I'm losing everything. I'm just going to accept that I, I'm, I'm going to loss. I'm going to lose my home. I'm going to lose my marriage. I'm going to lose this. I'm just going to accept it. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't accept this world. Do not be conformed to this, to this love, to this world. Do not, do not accept that lifestyle. But it said, but be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Transform means change. 
but change your mind. Change the lifestyle. Change the thing, way of thinking. Change that way of, of where you are. Change it. And it says your mind. Why the mind? Because the mind's the most powerful thing in the whole body you have. Everything starts in the mind. Everything starts with your what you think. Before you act, you think about it. The Bible says as long as you think about doing something wrong, that means you already did it. Everything starts in the mind. The mind is the most powerful tool you have. So it says renew your mind. Renew your mind. Stop thinking that you're poor. Stop thinking that you're worthless. Stop thinking that you're gonna lose everything. Stop thinking there's no way out. Stop thinking there's nothing There's nothing you could do. There's stop thinking all that stuff and renew your mind. Renew it to the will of God. Renew it to His will and He will perfect your life. He will give you a, 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 a prison to live for. Because sometimes when we're down in that pit, we forget the reason we live for. We forget why we're alive. Then we take the shortest route and the baddest route that a lot of people have done. They take their own life because they don't see no reason to live for no more. There's a reason why you're living. There's a reason why you're here. But if you keep in that path, you will never, ever see. But make that change. And you will see why there's a path. Why there's a reason we're walking through there. Why there's a reason why we through there. Let's read the other verse. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And this is going to be the key verse. We're going to stay in this verse, okay? So we're going to read it. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their equal ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lands. Again, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then, then I in heaven will hear their prayers and forgive their sins and heal their land. This is the key, key verse we're going to stay in this verse. We're going to stay, this is the main verse we're going to stay on. Because this will teach us the right way of going out and changing. Because sometimes we don't know the right way to change. Because we always try. We, I, I'm pretty sure you have tried to change and always lag back to the same thing. You just say, "I'm, I'm gonna stop drinking. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm gonna start doing this." And you maybe you accomplish it in, and what, in one two weeks, and then you, you, you and then it comes right back to it. Then you want to change again. Then it comes. You go right back to it. It's like you never able to change because you're not doing it. Like right way remember renew your mind in the will of God in his way everything everything there's there's a way for everything it's just not oh just throw it out to the window and here we're gonna go and just you know we're gonna do the best we can no it's not like that there's a way there's a how for everything all right so this is the key word we're gonna stay in this we're gonna this is key verse sorry we're gonna stay in this verse we're gonna we're gonna break this verse down we're gonna examine this verse down and from there we're gonna get different topics all right but it all gotta do with change all right so let's get in with this okay remember this is the key verse second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 and it's we're gonna break it down to five points here all right this is where you need to start writing things down we're gonna break to five different key points in this thing i'm gonna try to make as short as possible <coughs> <coughs> but we're gonna break it down to five points the first point the first the first point is called by him because right there in the first thing it says if my people who are called by my name the first point we're going to read is called by him. 
The second point is humble yourself. The third part, the third point is prayer. The fourth is seek him. And the fifth one is turn from your ways. Very simple, very easy. It may sound simple, but man, sometimes we just miss these points. You know, we just we just maybe hit one or two and, and we miss other threes, but uh, or we hit three and we miss two. <laughs> but it's very important to, to, to get all these five because at the very end of this verse, it says, then after you do these five, five things, then I will heal his land. I will bless you. I will help you. I will be there with you. I will help you, love you, show you the right way. But don't expect me to just be your bank teller and say, hey, just help me out and don't ask for me nothing. Hey, I'm the, no, no, man. God, God is not like that. God, God is not. How, how do you expect God to bless you if you don't even look for him? How do you expect him to, to be there if, if nobody wants to change? You know, there, there, there's there's a song that says, you know, that that the whole world's going, you know, down down in the gutters, and then then God to, God says in this song, says, man, what you guys doing down there, man? I mean, I gave you the tools, I give you the the the, the things so you guys could live well. What you guys doing? Why are you guys throwing all that down to the trash? And I'm like, I don't know, Lord. It's a very beautiful song. And, uh, it's by, oh um, uh, man, I forgot his name. Um, oh, well, I don't know. I'll try to put it down here. But the, the name of the song is Oh Lord. It's a, it's a it's a it's a cool song. I like the song. It's called Oh Lord, and um, but yeah, and, and and it says, you know, what you guys doing down there? And he's like, I don't know, Lord. I, I really don't. I don't understand. And like, I gave you everything. I, I I showed you everything. Why why are you guys struggling and doing all this stuff? Like, I, I don't know, Lord. So five topics again. Call by him, humble yourself, pray, seek him, turn from your ways. All right? So let's start with the first one. All right, man. Sorry about the light, man. I tell you, I didn't bring my night, so I'm just trying to work with the sun here. And the sun has decided to beam right at me today. And I had to put the visor down because if I don't, look at that. Ooh! That's too much light. Too much light. All right, let's get on with this, man. Call by him. This is very important because a lot of people like to say, ah, you know, we're all going to heaven. We all, we, I'm all Christian and I'm all this, and, and, and but they don't want to do nothing. How many people you know like that? They, they say they're Christians, they say they're this and they say that, but they live the same lifestyle as any other person out there. Well, the Bible talks about that. What does he mean, be called by him? All right, let's get with the first verse. Matthew 22, verse 14. Matthew 22, verse 14. And it says like this, For many are invited, but few are chosen. Very simple verse. Many are invited, but few are chosen. So, let me move a little bit. I think I, that's a better view right there. Many are invited to where? We, we are all invited to God's presence. Let me go up. There. We are all invited. Uh, let, let, me, let me pick up the chair a little bit, guys. See if, if this works a little bit better. I don't know. Let's see. I think that works a little bit better. Um, is it many are invited, but few are chosen? What, 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 what is that? We're invited to what? We're, 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 that? we're invited to be his child. We're, we're invited to be his disciples. We're invited to be his followers. We're invited to be his chosen people. We're invited to do all that stuff. 
but few are chosen. Let me see, where is this light coming out from here, man? The ones beside my hand. Uh, okay. Ah, wow, well, that's from the sun. Yeah, I can't do nothing about that one. Um, again, we're all invited to be his people, to be his disciples, to be with him. But not everybody are chosen. Not everybody chooses that invitation. He invites you. He invites you going to that place. But not, not everybody choose to go to. It's like if somebody invites you to a party and somebody tells you, hey, here's the invitation. But you choose to go or you chose or you choose not to go. If you choose to go, then you are you one of the chosen ones. But if you didn't choose to go, you're not chosen. You didn't get chose. It's your choice. Everything works with your choice. Everything happens because you started. If you took the first step, God will take another step. But everything starts with you. God makes the invitation. It's up to you if you want to be chosen. So let's read another verse because this makes a little bit more sense with the other verse. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to Twenty-four, And it says like this. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. See, that's why many don't choose to live his life. That's why many people say, nah, Thank you for the invitation, God, but nah, I prefer being here. I don't want to change. I don't want to, you know, I, I, want, I want to keep fighting for my life. I want to keep fighting for the blessings. And this is right there, whoever wants to save their life. I want, I, want to, I want to save this guy. I want to save this. I don't want to give it up. I have to keep fighting. I have to give more. I have to give more. I have to give, lose it. Seek me first. Seek first the kingdom of God, then everything else which shall be added to you. But seek Him first. Lose your life, lose your lifestyle, lose all that because you're not getting anything out of there. You're losing because you're keeping in that lifestyle. Lose your life. Then He will save you. Then He will bless you. That's why many are invited. Everybody's invited. If you choose to be there. Read the last verse. It says Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Now this one gets hard. Luke chapter 14, verse 6. <clears throat> this verse it says like this. In this this Bible it says like this in the New King and New International Version. It says like this: If anyone comes to me and does not hate father or mother, life and children, wife and children, sorry, brothers or sister, yes, even in their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Now, in this version, the Bible says hate. It is not literally hate, but the Bible says if in, in the Spanish version, and it says, and whoever does not uh, leave their father and mother, who not leave their wife, who not leave their children, who not leave their brothers and sisters, not even their own life for my sake, they're not welcome to me. They're not my disciples. Now, he's not saying do not, you know, rebel against your wife, rebel against your child, uh, don't, don't like them no more. No, no, no. What he's trying to say, if you put them first, if you put your wife first, if you put your father first, you put your your whole your your own life first before God, then you will never be my disciple. You will never be mine, and then you will never be called by me, because my disciple know my voice and hear my voice. That's what the Bible says. If you're my disciple, you will know my voice and hear my voice. But if you're not my disciple, I cannot call to you. So the main key verse. And the main key, and the, 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 the verse that we read, the, the main one who said, and my people who are called by my name. You are called by his name, but are you his people? Are you your chosen guy? Are you chosen, have you chose God to be your, your, your God and Savior? 
Because you're not, then you cannot hear his voice because you're not denying your life. And it says right there again, yes, even their own lives. Such a person cannot be my disciple. Such a person, that means God cannot be there. God cannot heal your land. God cannot bless you. God cannot help you change. God cannot help you change your lifestyle. If you're not, if you're not tired of that lifestyle, then you will never give up. You won't ever want to seek and change. But you need to come to realize that you're not going nowhere with that lifestyle. You're going to lose it all. You're going to lose it all. So deny everything you have. Pick up your daily cross and walk with God. What does that mean? What is your daily cross? Denying what you have. Don't let anything come before you and God. Put God first all the time. Every time, any association, put God first. All right? Let's get in with the next slide. All right, and then now let's get to another slide. And then it says, humble yourself. So remember the key verse. You always have to go back to the key verse. And my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Okay? So we already, excuse me. <coughs> <sighs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> I already went called by his name, called by him. What does it mean being called by him? Now let's what is, let's see, humble yourself. It's, it's, it's going to be short because it's only two verses, but it's very important. It's, it's one of the first things God asks from you uh, after you be called by his name. After you, you accept him like the Lord said, after you, you accept God as your as, as you are his disciple, uh, now the first thing he asks from you is humble yourself. That's the first thing he's going to ask you. Humble yourself. All right, let, let's let's go to the first verse. First Peter five six. First Peter chapter five, verse six, and it says this: Humble yourself, therefore, before under the Lord mighty hand, that He may lift you up in the due time. Humble yourself. All right. And now let's let's read the second verse uh, uh, quickly. Then we get them all together. Matthew chapter twenty three, verse twelve. Matthew chapter twenty three, verse twelve. And it says like this: For those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now. Again, this is the first thing God asks from you to humble yourself. Now, what does this mean for the people that are trying to change? The people who wants to, uh, you know, uh, 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 accept that they're wrong and they, they want to change their life. Well, that's what it really means. Accept that you did wrong. Accept that something happened that you that you accept. Except you're a, a, an addict. Except you're addicted to this. Humble yourself. Don't think, oh, I'm fine. Oh, it's gonna be good. That I got this. I, I you know, I, I will, I will fight through this. No, because it have not been working. It, it, it's you still struggling. You still you 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 you're not getting it. So you you need to humble yourself. You need to control yourself. Go down and admit who you really are. Admitting to God. God, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. I am. I'm. A, I'm addicted. I'm an addict. I'm. I'm a drug dealer. I'm. 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 You know. I'm this. I'm that. I, whatever it is. Admit it to God. Humble yourself before God. The first verse says, "Humble, be, humble before the hand under the God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time." So if you humble yourself, you say, "God, I did this." I am this person. This is who I am. I want to change. I, I, I need your help. And you humble yourself. But God will lift you up in due time. In his time, the right time, God's going to lift you up. God's going to help you. Now, if you don't do that, if you don't humble yourself, if you don't admit who you are, if you don't put yourself in the right area, then you are exalting yourself. You say, ah! You know, but, but that's why things go wrong to you because whoever exalts themselves will get humble. 
Now, you don't want to get humble. You don't want God to hum you down because then that's going to be hard. Or the devil's going to hum, uh, hum, um, humble you down. Or whoever life is. And it's going to put you in your place. And that's where you don't want to get wrong. See, it's for example, sorry. It's for example, uh, a, a lot of a lot of parents don't want to correct their kids, and they don't want to, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 well, yeah, correct the kids and and do time, but and they let them do anything and whatever they want, and they spoil them, and and and, and yeah, they don't believe in in, in in getting the bell, and they don't believe in and do that, and just no, honey, you know, they don't want to correct them. They don't they don't want them feel bad or whatever or whatever the case is and um what happens what happens down the road what happens down there well that kid will be getting raised up will raise up like he could do anything he wants and whatever he wants well he's not humbling himself he's boasting he's exalting himself well the life life out there is gonna humble him out there, life is going to put him down. Out there, somebody's going to humble him, and they're going to humble him hard. He's going to learn the wrong way. He's going to learn the right, the wrong way to mess with somebody or talk to somebody, and somebody's going to put him down. And they didn't have to go that way if you put him in your place. See, God does not give you a baby with any knowledge. He doesn't know right from wrong or this or that. It's, it's, it's a baby with zero knowledge in this world. You're the one who puts anything to that baby. You're the one who teaches him anything he knows. It's you. If, if it's the way you raise him up, that's the way he's going to grow up. And if you don't raise him up the right way to be humble, to be to be right, well, somebody's going to put him in their place. Because there's always a high high ranking, some, uh, uh, how do you say it, high ranking uh, person or whatever out there that's gonna put them in place but now we're talking about us again now if, if 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 you know your life is going down and you're losing it all you 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 you, you you're doing everything but you don't want to take the first step and say you know what God yes I am this I, 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 I'm, this, this is me. I need help. I'm humbling to myself. I'm humbling to you that I am this kind of person. There's, there's no way out of it. I am this and I admit I am this and it's time for me to change. It's time for me to get on it. Time, you know, I'm humbling myself before you. That's what it means. Humble yourself. All right. Let's get into the next verse. All right, now we come down to the third third point. Pray. <coughs> All of them are important. I'm not saying one is more important than another. All of them are important. But pray, that's when things start moving around. That's where the tables start to turn. Maybe not fully yet, but things are starting to turn. Start, things start happening in the spiritual world. Before before anything could happen in the physical world, things need to happen first in the spiritual world. If things don't happen in the spiritual world first, things are not going to happen in the physical world. So you need to get into the spiritual world. Spiritual world first. That equals prayer. Let's let's look at let's look at two verses real quickly. Um, uh, I always prepare uh, before we come here the verses so I could have them ready. But this time I didn't. Give me one second. Uh, one second. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right, Matthew chapter 26, verse 53. Matthew 26, verse 3, 20, 53, it says, Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put a, a, put, 
at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. So we're reading about Jesus Christ and, 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 and Jesus said this while he was, you know, there and dying almost. And, 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 and Jesus said, you don't think I could call to my father. You don't think I could pray to God and he will not put in my disposal 12 legions of prayer uh, of angels. Now we know angels are spiritual beings. We cannot physically see them. Uh, 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 because we can't. I mean, it's 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 in a spiritual world. Um, sometimes, you know, they allow themselves, or God allows ourselves to to see them. Uh, but ninety percent of the times, uh, you will never see them because they're in the spirit world. They work in the spirit world, and they're not going to get out of that spirit world. But God says right here, "Do you think I cannot pray to my Father? Don't you think I could pray to God?" And he will not send a legion, 12 legions of angels to protect you. And, and, and now, one angel itself could do so much, so much in this world. And in and, 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 um, um, I lost track what I was going to say. But in the Bible, there's, 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 um, there's a verse that says, with one angel... He did. He he did so much damage. I forgot. I forgot exactly. I had it in my mind, but just it just escaped right now. Ran away. Uh, but the angels have so much power in this world. Uh, they're here to help you. They're here to bless you. They're here to 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 uh, um, to protect you from the evil ones. But if you don't pray. If if you don't if you don't pray in the spirit well, the 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 if you don't pray to God, the spirit world cannot move. So the angels that are in the spirit well cannot move because you're not praying to Him. But once you pray, God will send His angel, like Jesus said, God will send twelve legions to me, and maybe not even twelve legions, you know, because we don't need that much angels. Just with one, that's more than enough. But God will send that to angels to you if you pray. Now, let's read another verse. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, 20 to 21. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 to 21. Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Whoever this kind does not go out except by prayer and by fasting. However, this kind does not go out except by what? By prayer and by fasting. This mountain will not move. This stuff would not move if only by prayer and fasting. Look what the God. Well, look what God said. If you have a mountain, if you have something disturbing you from from moving forward, from changing your life, from doing something, well, it will not move if you're not praying and fasting. It will not change. Because you're not moving, you're not putting seeds in the spiritual world, so things are not going to change in the physical world. Now, God's not talking about a physical mountain. He's talking about a spiritual mountain. He's not talking about a, a physical Mount Everest. You're not, don't go, you're not going to go to Mount Everest and say, in the name of Jesus, I tell you to move. No, God placed it there. That's God wanted it there. But you can move the spiritual mountains. You can move the addictions. You can move the 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 uh, the problems. Whatever is going on, you can move that. But you need to start praying. If you don't pray and fast, then you're not gonna get nowhere. When Paul and 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 Silas was Silas, I believe it's how you say his name in English. They were in the inner, in most inner part of prison. They were shackled down, they imprisoned down. 
And they start fasting. They start praying. They start worshiping to God. And they start moving things in the spiritual world. And starts and things start shaking and shaking so bad that everybody got up. Everybody start waking up. All the chains, all the sackles, everything got loosened up. And they were set free. They were able to walk free out of prison. There was another story that this young little miss, I forgot her name. I had it written down. Let me see if I could get it real quickly for you. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I found it. Diana. Diana was walking home from her friend's house, but she stayed late. I'm reading the story, okay? I'm, I'm reading the story how it is. She needed to walk through a dark alley, and at the, at the end of the alley, there was a man standing there like like he was waiting for her to pass by there. Now, this story, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start real quick because this story is actually a true life story. All right, this story is actually a true life story, and you can find these lot of stories and online, and you can research it. I don't know her last name, I, for some reason I didn't write her last name, but just look it up, and you'll find it. Her name is Diana. And okay, we keep going with the story. When she was getting closer to him, she was getting more and more scared and began to pray. But keeping on, keep on walking. She passed a man and made it and made it safe to the home. So she was walking and walking this at dark alley, and she saw this man, you know, in the dark alley out there alone, like, like waiting for somebody, creeping, you know. She got scared. Who wouldn't get scared, you know? And, and, and it she stopped praying, God help me, God help me, protect me, God protect me. And she just walked by and nothing happened. The next day, she noticed that the news, there was a murder. They were uh, 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 at that alley she was walking through. At that very, uh, uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. At that very moment, she began to cry because she walked. She just walked the same alley, and she noticed that man. After she recognized, she went. She went to the police and told them what happened to her, and and they asked her if she can do a lineup and recognize him as the murder as a murder and she pointed him out so fast so she got to the house she made it home and she went to sleep so after she got up there was she apparently she saw the news and there was a murderer that happened at the same alley she walked by and when they were announcing the murder she they, they came out the the face of the uh, uh, the person who murdered the person and she realized that it was the same man that she passed by him and so she started crying and realized that you know nothing happened to her she told her mom and her mom and her went to the police and they didn't line up and she pointed him out it was clear who she was after that the police thank her and asked her if they could do anything for her. And the only thing she wanted is to ask him why he didn't attack her. So after she did the nine up, the police asked her, you know what, thank you. Thank you for your help, thank you for everything. Can we do anything to help you? And she said, well, there's only one question. There's only one thing, now I wanna ask him a question. Well, why? Why did he attack her? Why why he didn't attack me if I was there before? And and he said I don't I don't harm I didn't harm her because she was walking with two great big men beside her and he and he got scared seeing them. So while she was walking he he did notice her. But what he also saw there's two great, powerful, big men beside each side of her, protecting her. So he got scared of the two men. Now, she was walking by herself. But what was happening? She was praying. Now, let me give you another short story. Uh, yeah. And there was a minister man named John Pattern. Patton. And his wife wanted, went to a place where there were no Christians ever been. 
For a while, they could never get close to anybody at all. One night, when John and his wife were getting ready, they noticed the village nearby surround them, and they wanted to kill them both. They didn't have any weapons or anything to defend themselves. They began to pray to God. A short while, they noticed that all the villagers were gone. A short while, one of the head leaders, after no, not sure while, after a while, one of the head leaders in the village became a man of God. And one night, the leader and the minister John began to talk about that night. And John asked him what happened to them. The leader said. They ran away when they saw all the men around surrounding John and his wife with swords and shiny armor, and they were great. So these guys are ministry. They went to minister to a country that there's no Christians. The man John and his wife. And once they got there, they were trying to talk to them, wanting to work with them, trying to get closer to them and, you know, turn them to God. And they never wanted to accept it. Then they hit it and they started hitting them. But they hit them so much that they wanted to kill them. They decided they're going to kill these people. So one night while they were in the tent, I guess, packing up or whatever they were doing. But they were in the tent, the whole village around the tent completely. And they start coming in. Well, later on down, the, later on when they were getting closer, they start seeing a lot of people around, around their camp with swords, with shiny armor. And they were powerful and great. So they got scared. And the villagers got scared. They're like, oh, who are these now? Who are these guys? protecting John and they took off but John he didn't hire nobody to protect him he did the one thing we all need to do pray now the third short, short story I'm going to tell you this actually happened to us happened to our family this happened to us one day a man came to our house and he tried to answer but when he came in the, he ran out but I'm talking about he ran out like somebody was trying to kill him. So he came into the house. He was, he got there as soon as he got into the house. Boy, took off running like someone's gonna kill him. Uh, as soon as he got out of the house, he vomited, and then he was able to come back in. A few time passed. We asked this man what happened to him, and that day that he was that he got to the house there was and he said there was two great men guarding the door and they told me he cannot come in until he vomit all the evil things he did doing in doing doing uh been been doing until then he was able to come in but he came in still and tried but like i said he ran out because he needs to vomit it out. So, uh, so what happened is that this man was a uh, practicing uh, um, uh, devil worshiping, or, or uh, I don't know how you want to say it, but he he was practicing bad stuff, right? And he he came and visited us our house, and and he and he, he said well, as soon as he got into the house, he saw two giant mans on the doors guarding the doors. We didn't have nobody guarding the doors, <laughs> uh, and they told him you're not but you're not gonna come in here like that. But this man still, fortunately, he got in the house, and and. Everything start messing up, and he ran out of the door and had to throw up all the evil things, all the evil pack he did. And, and the, then the, the gardens, the angel said, "Then you're welcome to come in." Now, why do I say this was a prayer? Because my dad back then, I mean, he's I'm sure he still does it now, but I don't live with him no more. But back then, you see him praying every day, all day long, even at night. Every time I got up at night to use the restroom, he was always praying. doesn't matter what time it was, 3 or 4 in the morning, he was always praying, praying and praying and praying and praying. But anytime you pray, things start moving in the spiritual world. Things start happening. The angels start moving around and start, the angels start working in your life. The table, the table starts to change to your favor. But you need to start praying. Remember, there's five things we got to do 
first we gotta accept the Lord God. We gotta we gotta tell him God, I did this. God, I, that, I you know I accept you. Thank you for the invitation. I am I am I'm, I'm accepting you. The second thing, you humble yourself, God. You know I did this. I am this kind of person. I did this. I did that. I, yes, I am this. Then you pray, God. Thing that that's when you start praying. That's when the angels start moving. That's when the things start turning. All right, let's get into the next. <clears throat> All right. So now the next slide is seek him. And that's the fourth point. Seek him. Now after you humble, you pray. Uh, now it's time to seek him. What is seeking him? What it, what it really means to seek God? Is when nobody, sorry, when nobody forces you or tells you, hey, it's time to pray. Hey, it's time to read the Bible. Time to go to church. It's time to praise God. It's time to do this. No, it's when you if when you really want to seek Him, when you really want to read the Bible because you want to learn about Him. You want to. You you really you really praising God. You you nobody tells you to do it. You want to do it. That is seeking Him. That's really truly seeking God. But let's read the word. Is, uh, let's go to the first book, Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 13. Not book, sorry, verse. Jeremiah chapter 20. What did I say the first one? 19, 20, something like that. Jeremiah 29, 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. Oh, my God. Good thing I got to write it down there, right? <laughs> All right, it says like this. You see God... You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Again, when you seek him, you will find him. But you have to seek him with all your heart. You need to look for him with all your heart. If you don't look for him with all your heart, you're never going to go nowhere. You're never going to find God. You're never going to help that. But if you find him with all your heart, if you go in with this, if you truly go with it all your heart, if you go with everything you have to God, then you will find him. If you really want to look for the word of God, because that's the tool he gave us to help us. If you go in there with it with all your heart to learn something by it, you are going to find something with it. Now, let's read the other verse. It says... Uh, Second Corinthian no, uh, Chronicles, sorry. Second Chronicles, chapter fifteen, verse two. Second Chronicles, chapter fifteen, verse two, and he says, he went out to meet Asha. I guess that's the, the way you say the name, and said to him, "Listen to me, again, Asha, and all Judah and all Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with Him. If you seek Him, He will He will be found by you. But if you forsake Him," He will forsake you. So the first part of the verse is, is just God calling this man and all Judah and all Benjamin and all the people. And he's telling this. This is the main part. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you want God by your side, if you want God's blessing, if you want him to help you out and get out of that chain to help you out, will he be with you if you are with him? If you seek him, you're able to find him. But if you forsake him, now, here's the thing. If you forsake God, he has to forsake you too. God will step back and say, you know what? You don't want to listen. You don't want to follow my, my ways. You don't want to... You don't want to change. You really don't want to change. You want to live your life like like, like you want to. You, like everybody says, oh, don't tell me. I'll live my life how I want to live my life. This is my life, and I'll do whatever I want. But yeah, that's when God says, okay, I'll step back then. And you do you. You do you, and see what happens to you. Then God says, you finish doing yourself. You, you finish doing you. Right now, do me. So I could be with you. So I could help you out. But do you. If you want, if you want to live that way, you do you. 
you want to be out there you know what do you but don't expect me to be there with you because you're forsaking me you live in me you're the, you're the one leaving me and God says okay go ahead you do you then all right another verse says James chapter 4 verse 8 James chapter 4 verse 8 says come near to God and he will come near to you wash your hands you sinners and beautiful and beautify your heart you double-minded he said come near to God and he will come near to you then wash your hands nah, he's not talking about physical hands now we're talking about spiritual spiritual hands here again everything happens first in the spiritual before everything happens in the physical Wash your hands, humble yourself. Put, you know, accept what you did. Pray, pray God for forgiveness. Accept them. Then come near to God. If you come near with an open heart, He's gonna come near to you. But if you don't come near to Him, if you don't, if you, if you don't want, you want, you don't want nothing to do with Him. You just want the bless. He cannot bless you if He's not with you. I cannot help you if I'm not with you. I'm not, I'm not there with you. I don't know. I, I, I see you, but you don't want you, you don't want my help. I'm telling you to do this. No, 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 no. I'll do me. Don't tell me how to live my life. Oh, well, then you do you then. Do, do whatever you want then. But don't ask for my help then. Seeking him is again. When nobody has to tell you to do something. When nobody out there has to tell you, hey, look for him. No, no, you, you really want to seek him. I, I, I compare I compare this as as a, as a treasure hunter. You know, people tell the treasure hunter, there's nothing out there. You're crazy. Why are you out there spending your time? But they're out there moving their, their uh, uh, metal detector back and forth, you know, trying to find this and that. And like, man, you're, you're dumb. Give up. There's nothing. Give up. Give up. And they're moving their metal detector back and forth, back and forth. They're not giving up. They're seeking. They're seeking. And they're seeking. They're seeking and they're seeking. And one time they hit the, hit, they hit the jackpot. Boom! Oh my God, he hit it. Now, who gets the riches? Was the person who said give up, don't worry about it? No, he didn't get nothing. The one who was seeking finds the treasure. He was the one who was able to keep the prize. Now the person who was telling him give up, now he wants to come along. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Like, no, 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 nobody here. Step away. <laughs> There's nobody here. Nah, 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 nah. You were not here when I was seeking. You were not here when it was raining and pouring. I was still praying. When, when trouble came down and, and everything fell against me, you were not here to help me out. You know, nobody was here to help me out. I was down here on my knees looking for this treasure. Finally, I found it. Now I'm happy. Now I'm, I'm rejoicing. Now I don't have to worry. Well, nobody's going to be there to fix your life. I cannot fix your life. Your mom cannot fix your life. Your dad cannot fix your life. Nobody's going to be able to fix your life. But only you, if you're out there busting your butt, seeking God, God, because nobody, not, not because I'm telling you or some of the pastor's telling you, because you want to change. You want to find that treasure because you want to get it. And when you get it, ooh, then you joy, then you rejoice. All right, let's get into the next slide. All right, guys, uh, got a whole change for the whole another day. <laughs> um, I got really busy at work, so I couldn't finish this this video. So, um, so let's come into the next slide where we left off, and it's uh, turning from your ways. So, this is now this is very important. Um, sorry because there's not a lot of light right now. I'm trying to get the most light as I can, but uh, there's just not a lot of light right now. Uh, but. Turning from your ways, it's um, 
is the next the next slide and and this is a very important one because that's the very last part of uh, before we able to God to come in and heal our lands and to bless us completely you know it, it, it starts again if my people if called by my name so first you need to realize that we God's people and uh, then then after that um, give me one second um, after that we we come down to you know to our to if my people who are called our name will humble themselves so you know after we humble ourselves we realize who we are and we're nothing we're nothing without god then then that's then that's the key word right now right we have to humble ourselves realize that we are sinners that we are we we did fall in wrong times after that we start praying to god and ask god you know god forgiveness and we are closer to god and ask god for guidance after that you start seeking god well that comes with praying as well you know that's mostly all connected it, is, it may seem long what i'm just trying to explain here but it's not really long it's not really hard it, it's all one package together but if you don't you don't if you don't put all the puzzles together then the whole package is not going to work so now you start seeking him you start seeking his counsel seeking his face seeking his you know his wisdom after that comes turning your ways see now this is the key word because now this is where we really have to change the way we think, the way we act, the way we are, you know, um, what, what we're doing, you know, you know, you know, for example, you know, drinking is bad, but you don't want to change that, you know, you don't want to give up that, but now, if you're ready for that change, you ask God, you get, God's giving you all the strength, you see God, God saw, God's giving you strength, then you have to make that final decision of changing your ways make that final decision of you say giving up and say you know what i don't want to drink no more i don't want to do that no more and cut it out of your life but let's go ahead and read the first verse uh it's gonna be Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7 Isaiah 55 verse 7 it says let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteousness their thoughts let them turn to the lord and he will have mercy on them and to our god for he will freely pardon so it says let the wicked for, forsake the ways and the unrighteousness their thoughts which that's all of us that's that's all of us the bible says because we are all we all have fallen short from the glory of god and that's what jesus came and died on that cross for us because we all have fallen short from the glory of god no one has reached that perfection so we all wicked and we all own righteousness but once we come to god and god cleans us from our sins then we get sealed by his holy spirit so that goes away but we have to change the way we think the way we walk the way we, we the way we do stuff you know change your ways then if you do change your ways god may have mercy on you now if god has mercy on you and anything belongs to god well then you have everything you need but if you don't have if god does not have mercy on you then somebody else is taking control of your life which there's only two rulers in this earth there's God and there's a devil. But, you know, let's get, let's get into another verse. It's uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 5. Jeremiah 25, verse 5. And it says, They said, Turn now each of you from your evil ways and your evil practices, and you can stay in the hand in the land, the 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 Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever and ever. Watch this. Watch this verse. Turn now, each of you, from your evil ways and your evil practices. Your evil ways. What you what what you doing? What you thinking? What you what your mindset? Then from the evil practices as well. You know, stop practicing that. Stop doing that. You know it's wrong. Why are you doing it? Stop doing it. Then, because if you can, if, if you can stay in the land 
of the Lord gave you and your ancestors. The land that flowed with milk and honey. Now, we're not physically in that land, but spiritually, what does that mean to us? Well, again, everything works in the spiritually, what I said before. Praying, seeking God, that's that's a spiritual world. Now, this right here comes in the spirit, the, the physical world. Now, this is what God's talking about. First, we did we did all the four things, all the four things in the spiritual world. The fifth one is for the physical world. Now, this is where God heals our land, bless our land. God gives us that land back to milk that flows milk and honey. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to go through problems and we're not going to go through, you know, tough times. But then God's right there helping you out. God's going to be there protecting you, holding you and give you a door that there, where the world doesn't give you a door. God's going to give you a door. See, that's the difference because we all go through trouble time. We all go through tough time. We all go through, you know job loss and everything but the difference is that God will open a door for you where the devil doesn't open a door for nobody you know you have to bust your butt when they but then God's with you it's it, 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 it's kind of like the union you know, when the union will protect its workers because the union's paying the workers are paying the union to protect their workers well God all these fasting all this seeking all this stuff you're paying to God as well and God's gonna protect his servants so that's the difference though see the first four is in the spiritual world the fifth it's in the physical world to get to the physical world, to get the blessings in the physical, you have to do the four things in the spiritual world first. Remember, all the time I have said this with this video, first is the physical, first spiritual world, then the physical world. First the spiritual world, then the physical. There we go. If you can't get the spiritual world down, then the physical world is not going to get down with you. So you need to be down first. You need to get that settled down first and establish in your life. First, establish your life first. Your spiritual life. Establish that. Then the physical world will establish with it. And God will be in control completely. All right, guys. Let's get in with the next slide. All right, guys. Come to the last slide. Um, it's almost over. <laughs> um, but again, guys, I just want to clear this out. No more, no more verses, no more nothing. I just want to clear it out again, man. God is not your personal banker. He is not no pawn shop that you just deposit some prayers and and uh, say, you know, some sing some hams, hams or whatever, and um, and he'll bless you like that. No, God does not work like that. God, God is not like that. Um, He's not, he cannot be fooled. He cannot be tricked in anything. He's all knowing. He's all powerful, guys. So, um, again, uh, we are here to learn, you know, and, and don't be afraid of, of learning and changing your life. It's very hard, um, uh, sometimes, and very scary to change things where you have sat down and you've been used to it so much. Um, you've been used to that lifestyle, that way of thinking, that way of uh, doing all your rest of life and, and then to change completely. Uh, it may be scary sometimes, but I promise you it, it will only get better because you cannot go lower than you're already at. You cannot go lower than being low down to the ground. Sometimes it, it takes us to get all the way to the down of the pit to realize that we can't go no more you know that's it we give up and uh and that's why i think i think that's why jesus allows us to get down all the way to the pit uh first before we before we um really seek change you know and um so it really it really it really you really start to give up in your life and you really start to say if this doesn't work then i don't have another reason and uh and when we're down there in the pit we realize that only god can save you only god can take you out of that pit but if you're not down all the way down yet sometimes you you keep thinking i could do it i could do it i could do it and uh and you're not ready to let god take control
And guys, I just want to leave you with that, guys. Have a great one. Have a good one. Uh, God may bless you. And the next video we're going to have here is not going to be a, a lesson or a sermon. Uh, we're going to have a spiritual talk. We're going to talk to about people, uh, different uh, leaders. Um, about. Uh, we're going to talk about actually about demons. Uh, me trying to uh, get this uh, rolling. And I got some leaders of different churches, of different uh, uh, religions. And uh, that, that want to talk about demons and uh, what do they believe what they are, what do they say they are, and um, how they come, do we see them, and stuff like that. Well, hopefully, that will sound, this will sound interesting to y'all. And at the end of the whole interviews of everybody, we will go over a little summary, and uh, that will be it. So, that will be for the next video, guys. Hopefully, you guys like that as well. Well, if you guys like this kind of content, no, guys, if you really like uh, this lessons I'm giving y'all, please, 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 it's a free, everything's free, put, put a thumbs up and share and like, that's free for y'all, and that will help me out as well. I'm not getting paid for this, but the way it helps me out, getting motivated to keep going, and it helps me, you know, uh, spread the word of God more. So, again, guys, uh, thank you for being here do that for, for me if you have any other uh, uh, any other conversation or any topic you would like to talk about or or know about or if you would like to come and uh, come and be live not live but have a recording with me uh, and have a spiritual talk uh, let me know all right shoot me a message and uh, yeah we'll be with y'all the next time peace Nombre de Señor.